Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the special club meeting, May 28th, um, 5 o'clock p.m. It's a virtual meeting and it's a special club meeting. First, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Next is I'd like to say that all school board members are present. Um, and the agenda is as is because it is a special club meeting. Uh, first thing that is to be approved is consider and approve the creation of a principal for the Floyd County Early College Academy. Uh, does anybody have any comments or any questions that they need to discuss for this item? Uh, has this been called uh, principal bo before? No, no coach, it hasn't. And that's one of the reasons that we can, if we change that title, because we've been using a director in that position, to yeah. direct, uh, or paid you know, a little more than what our, our principals are. So I felt like if we used a principal there, that uh, we could uh, certainly save a little bit of money. Yeah. Okay. And that's always a good thing. Good thing, yes. I will say, okay, go ahead. I'll save that for Tiffany. I'll let her write the good <laughs> on that one. Because we did get an email back on that, right, Tiffany? On the, the on the title one. Title. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So really All right, good. So I, I need a motion to approve the creation of the principal for the Floyd County Early College Academy. I'll make the motion. Need a second, Do oh. Dr. Chander? Oh, okay. Any opposed? That motion passed. Next is consider and approve the fiscal year 2021 tentative working budget. I guess okay. Tiffany will take over. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen with you all. There she is. Okay. Everybody see that? Uh, no. See you. There we go. There we are. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to give a brief overview of the, the tentative budget for next fiscal year. And the topics we're just going to talk about the estimated revenues, summary of expenses, and conclusion. So right now, the total general fund fiscal 21 revenues are estimated to be $42,817,632.39. We are estimating a beginning balance of $5,890,850. And we're hoping that fund balance will go up. Right now, that's just an estimate. You know, we're still estimating um, June's revenues, June's expenses, and then plus we got the uh, CARES money too. So that's going to help alleviate uh, some of the general fund. Uh, something I just wanted to point out was um, the SEEK amounts. Tiffany, um, how many money we gave for the CARES money? Because I read that. The CARES money, uh, we got. $2,914,514. And that's and this, between two different two different grants. There's the gear money, which is the, the gear money, which is governor's dollars, and the CARES money, which are the are the, the federal dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And this beginning balance does not include those dollars, correct? It does not. Okay. No, we're still we're still getting our game plan together on on what we want to do and how we're gonna, you know spend those funds or what we might reclass from the general fund to that grant. How much, how much was the other monies, the governor's money you called? It's split in two different grants. It's the gear funds, which is the governor's. Um, that one's $426,753. And then there's the ESSER funds, which is the uh, education, elementary, secondary education relief fund. We got okay. $2 million. Four hundred eighty-seven thousand seven hundred sixty-one dollars. Okay. I will tell you real quick while Tiffany's on that, and we already brought that up. Um, for us to take the district completely one to one, that would be K twelve. Um, we have put out another order for Chromebooks and laptops at eight hundred thousand dollars. So that that's where a, a large portion of that money is going, and what we hope to do with that is to strengthen our online learning uh, in these situations that we're undergoing right now. Uh, what, we don't know what we'll face this fall. So 
we wanted to certainly be prepared technologically so we could move forward with with uh, a, a more quality online learning than what we had this spring. Is that from the federal money? Yes, yes. That would be? Yeah. Okay, so something I just want to point out is the, the seek amounts. Um, if you'll look at fiscal year 19 compared to fiscal year 20, our seek, which is our state money, I went down $962,416. $962, and right now for fiscal year 21 with the seek forecast, we're estimating another decrease of about $585,000. Um, they're using our AADA from the 1819 school year, but most of that decrease is in our special ed where they reclassified uh, the students from the low, moderate, and, and high, <coughs> everything else kind of remained constant within the, the seat formula. What we've looked at, guys, as we're working through this corrective action plan with KDE, um, you know, one of the issues, and as you look through what the uh, the uh, report said, the investigative report, it said that we were basically over identifying students. So as we've gone through that, you can see that our numbers of students are dropping, which does affect our number or our, our, our uh, seat dollars in that department, in that area. Okay, and then just all other revenues and taxes, um, they're budgeted consistently with, with past years. So this was what I was talking, our beginning balance, we're estimating $5,890,850.39. Um, your revenue from local sources, um, that's gonna be your property tax, motor vehicle taxes. Um, your revenues from state sources, that's gonna be your SEEK money that's coming from the state, uh, telecommunication tax, and vocational transportation money that we get from the state. Um, your federal revenue, uh, that's basically our Medicaid reimbursement that we get. And then we get a portion of Head Start reimbursement, um, basically what they have left over in their budget at the end of the year, because uh, we pay some of those from the general fund. They reimburse us what they can from that. And then uh, your other receipts is your um, indirect costs that we get from the food service department. This is the same figures I just went over. It's just in a, a pie chart where you can kind of see how the, the percentage goes. So you see you know, our major portion is our state funding that, that we get. <clears throat> Expenditure highlights. Right now in the tentative budget, we have all staff and their friends budgeted. And that includes the step raises uh, that they have. Um, all operational costs, utilities, fuel, parts, etc. they're all budgeted. Tiffany, since COVID-19 has happened, how has our utilities been at our facilities? Have we seen a, a, a drop in the cost of, of utilities? They have went down. I know Angie was talking today, you know, just what a decrease in the utilities um, from the, the, the bill that she had received. Uh, but I don't know the exact figure. I mean, I can get that for you. Sure, that, that would that's, be interesting to see. Yeah, that's one of the things that we've seen. And we've also seen, you know, with no athletics or no no field trips or events, yeah. uh, we as much travel. But what we have done is, um, as we look at feeding meals, and we're having to feed so many meals and try to do it uh, with non-perishable foods, those non-perishable foods cost a little more. Actually, Dale tells me they cost quite a bit more than the food that we would fix and serve as hot meals. So our food, our food uh, expense has gone up a little bit. And then, of course, you know, we're still traveling our roads with our buses and delivering those meals. But we're doing that three days a week now. So we should be seeing a little bit of savings uh, in, in our transportation costs. Transportation, yeah. Uh, our Section 6 budget that the schools get, um, that's all set up with $100 per student. Those amounts are budgeted to the schools. And supplies, materials, services, travel are all budgeted to provide services based on projected needs at this time. Uh, right now, we have a contingency of 3%. Um, we would like 
that 4%, uh, about 2 million, but again, that's due to change once we get the year closed, once we see our true fund balance. Um, but you're required to have a 2% contingency. And right now we do not have any new buses or vehicles that's included in this budget. So this is just a summary of how those general fund expenses uh, fall. So Linda, you were asking about the, uh, your I see it, teachers, yeah. all that. That's that first line, your salaries. Yeah. Um, that, that's all the code right there. Um, employee benefits, uh, your purchase professional and technical services, that's your consultants, uh, legal, security, auditing. Um, you've got your purchase property services that's a lot of the repairs and maintenance uh, vehicle leases that we do and contracted ground services uh, that maintenance does uh, you've got your other purchase services that's going to be our insurances online networks telephone service uh, tuition for your early college students um, supplies that's your instructional supplies uh, your electricity would fall in there, gas, uh, diesel, computers, health supplies, uh, property. We don't see that a whole lot anymore. That's what our fixed assets would be coded under, and that's anything that's greater than 5,000. Uh, used to, we used to have to code all computers in the property, but they no longer require that. Um, your 800 is debt service and miscellaneous, and that's your kiss the payments, uh, your bus payments, and then that's bus trips. And then your other items, that's gonna be the cats match for the general fund. And then that also includes the bond payments uh, for Betsy Lane High School's baseball field, that, that's in there. And again, this is the same, same numbers we just went over. And so that just shows you you know, what a big chunk of the general fund budget goes to, to salaries and fringe. And I think we talked about last year, if you'll notice, our salaries um, fall somewhere in the neighborhood of right at 70 and a half percent or 71%. I yeah. think the goal across the, the, any district, school district, keep that below 78% if you can. So we're doing, we're doing pretty good with that. Uh, we, we, we look across our classrooms and when we're seeing uh, overstaffing. We've been taking care of that. We've done that over the last two years. And even looking at these, uh, you know, these special education dollars, these IDEA dollars that are affecting our city, we are in the process of, of cutting some of that staff as well. Because when you're when you're not identifying that many students, you certainly don't need that many folks. Any folks we add right now are just very student specific. That students have needs that have to be. Met. So that, that kind of runs in. So I. In my opinion, we're doing pretty well with our, our salaries. And there was not a, a change in the CERS amount this year, so that was good. Normally that goes up a good 3% every year. And originally it started out um, going up about two point. Well, it was going from 24.06% to 26.95. That was back in the spring. And then I guess after COVID hit, they decided to keep that uh, CERS rate constant for this fiscal year. So it's gonna remain at 24.06%. I think that's kind of what they did with everything that affected the budget this year. They just left it at till the next budget, uh, till next year, I guess. Let's yeah. see how this one pans out. Okay, so the next is still the same expenses that we were discussing. This just kind of groups it into uh, a function code. Um, so your, your instruction function up there, that's gonna be your teachers, your aides, uh, your people out in the school, um, your student support services, that's gonna be more attendance, your guidance counselors, health service, uh, your instructional staff support, um, that's more technology, media, your office of instruction, um, district, Admin support, um, that's community education, the school board, superintendent office, um, your school admin, 
that's where your principals fall, assistant principals, your office staff, uh, your business support services, that's you're gonna be your finance, senior HR, your plant and operations, that's basically your maintenance department, um, their expenses, student transportation, that's our transportation department, debt service, so that's our KISTA payments, and then the uh, fund transfers, that's that CATS match that I had mentioned before from the general fund and that general fund bond payment that we have uh, for the Betsy Lane High School baseball field. Again, just a chart of what I just talked about, just to, to show you, you know, what that looks like compared to all the different functions of expenses. So what's ahead, um, actual seek allocations, they normally come out in September. Um, around August, early August, we'll be setting the tax rates once we get all that information from the PBA and from the state. And like I mentioned before, you know, the actual fund balance will change, but uh, it's gonna be close to what we estimate or, you know, even better, because like I said, we plan to, to Replace so, so, some of those expenses. Some of the things that we received uh, as the gear money from the government, the CARES money, it was meant to reimburse the district, just like the extra foods that we're having to pay for. So that money will help do that. It was help. Um, it'll be used for people that we've used to feed the children to do the meals with. Those are all acceptable uh, uh, ways that this money can be spent. So what that will do is that will put money back into our general fund as we shift monies. And again, we're hoping that we'll have a, a little stronger carry forward than what we have, what we're showing. So, yeah. And, you know, while we're talking about the, the CARES Money Act, um, it's not through KDE, but the um, after school programs, uh, Allen, uh, Prestonsburg Elementary and May Valley, their early child care they've applied uh, through the state to get money too, to kind of help them. Um, and I know Prestonsburg Elementary, they got 13,500. May Valley got 4,500 and I've not heard back from Allen on the amount that they applied for, but that was nothing that went through KDE, that went through another whole department in Frankfurt. And you know, we, we guys, we run into situations with, with some of those programs occasionally where they cost us a little more to run than money as they bring in. But if you look at the impact they have on communities and on children and on working parents, uh, it, it's a bargain for us. We we want to keep those running as long as we can, and, and you know, obviously, we want to run them as 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 efficiently as possible. But they provide a pretty big service for our communities, our parents, and our students. So we certainly want to keep those going as long as we can. And the final budget, you know, we'll have it nailed down in September once. Um, like I said, once we get the year closed and see where we stand and um, cause we still get a lot of stuff that comes in in July, you know, <coughs> revenues that go back to the prior fiscal year. And um, like I said, we'll have it nailed down with the staffing then. And uh, How's our tax collection this year compared to last year since COVID-19 has hit? Have we seen a, a drop in the amount of money that we've collected? Not really at this time. I mean, we're, like I said, we still should receive June and some in July normally. So we're pretty, we're pretty close to what we have estimated. I think when I looked a couple of weeks ago at what we had budgeted, I think we're only 25 or $30,000 off that budgeted amount. And, right. you know, we still have a month or so to collect. So we're in pretty good shape with that. Good. So hopefully it still comes flowing in after, you know. Yeah, we, we love week or two. <laughs> One of the things that I wanted to mention that Tiffany didn't get a chance to touch on, we spoke a little bit earlier, is that uh, Mr. Pack came to me on uh, on Monday or Tuesday, maybe over the holidays, right at, right after the holiday. So it must, must have been Tuesday. They they do a thing uh, with federal grants called a hold, hold harmless. Am I correct in that, Tiffany? Yes. It's and, and that means you'll get no less than the hold harmless. Well, our hold harmless title one dollars were supposed to have been three million and twenty thousand dollars. Up to, is right at the three million dollar level. We got an initial allocation on Tuesday or Wednesday of five million dollars. So that's a two I? difference. 
Now, we, we have reached out to them a couple of times and they keep telling us the same thing. This is your tentative application. It may fluctuate a little bit, but you know, right now we're in pretty good shape. So, because we were nervous that we had received money we weren't supposed to be, we, we didn't want to encumber that or, or look until we knew for sure. But again, we get reassurance today that that's our application right now. And we've double checked a couple times. I know Denise has checked with her contact. I've checked with the budget contact. We're checking with every way just to make sure that that number is accurate. To because I told them we didn't want to plan, you know, on something and, and not be accurate. Is that Title One? Did you say? Yes. Yeah. The tentative that it's showing was. I've got my uh, right here. It was five million uh, twenty thousand nine hundred eleven. When we were expecting three million fifty three three hundred twenty eight, so it went up. That's that's great. That's good, yeah. So it really is, and you know, we had we had looked at some type of one cuts this spring, and as far as staffing, and if this is the true case, we should be able to go back with those, and and, and again put that back into the general fund, because we just decided that one of the one of the high schools was so close on its staffing and allocations, um, we we want everyone to be as as equal as possible. Okay, so if I've got a school that's staffed with three teachers more than they should have, but one of my other schools are staffed one one teacher more than they should have, that's not very equal. That's not uh, equality. So what we try to do is keep everybody right in that range. So we'll we'll probably put if if this is the scenario, the true case, and it seems to be, we'll pay for two of those teachers back at a, at one of our high schools that had lost two because of uh, Title One cuts. We'll pay for those and put that back in the general fund. So it's probably another hundred, hundred ten thousand, hundred fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> fund. Yeah. You know, we worked that out. So, and there's a couple scenarios like that. Some things that we, that Tiffany had budgeted in that we know have not turned out to be the case, uh, such as some folks retiring that kind of thing that we'll be able to put back as well. So, we're, I feel pretty good about it right now. That's that is I have, unless anybody has any questions for me. Just keep up the good work, Tiffany. I'm trying to. Yeah, keep that money flowing. I've had a I've had a ride. Every time I ask Matt, I'm like, was this like this? And I'm just glad I could come in first year COVID hits, but I guess uh, <laughs> just make me tough around the scene. She says she Matt, has this ever happened before? And he's like, Nope, never. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I can be the first. Yeah. Take it with pride. Tiffany does a good job for certainly. We're glad to have her. Very, very glad to have her. Exactly. Yeah. Tiffany, right. Tiffany, I used to call Matt the money man, but now I'm going to call you the money woman. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll smile at least because I know Matt wouldn't. So <laughs> please get that up. I mean, had a $2 million increase in Title One funds. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any other questions for Tiffany? I have I'm one good. question, the five million dollar, any restrictions? It's oh, federal dollars, so there are quite a few restrictions, Dr. Chandra. But it's the way we've spent this money uh, before, so we, we know how the what the restrictions are. And they're really good at KDE that if you have a question, you can call and ask it. And they have, what are they called? They're called uh, advisors uh, that will walk you through how you can spend the money. And then we have two a funding matrix uh, that we follow. It will basically say supplies, yes or no, or salaries, yes or no. And that's you know kind of how the finance side follows that funding matrix to make sure that it is uh, you know an allowable expense. Now, Dr. Chandler, the question the question you just asked, um, if you look at the gears money dollars, which was almost five hundred thousand dollars. That was specifically specified. That was given to the districts to help with feeding students, delivering meals, and online education. So those are things we can reimburse the district for. Uh, or even what we've done with our, you know, our extra duty pay, the twenty-five dollars a day, that can be reimbursed back uh, through these funds. So they're they're a little more specific. But when you get to uh, the CARES dollars, the ESSER dollars. They, they gave us a little more flexibility with that. So we're, we've got a little more flexibility to use that. Um, we certainly can, can use it as far as, again, we want to we want to make sure we've got everything in line that we can attack uh, 
instruction this fall with a, more, a stronger online learning presence, even to the point that we're look, we're in, we are looking at hotspots for students that would be able to take them home to use that for Wi-Fi. Um, and looking at, again, I told you guys earlier that we're, we're going to, we want to, uh, if we can record lessons onto the, onto the Chromebooks and send them home, the kids can access them without Wi-Fi. Now they wouldn't be able to complete their, turn in their work until they came back to school. So with all the hybrid models and the online learning, there's just things we're going to have to do. And I bet you we may be one of the only districts in Eastern Kentucky that have a true K-12 one-to-one uh, device scenario. So we right. to hang too. Is Title One May still attached to free and reduced learning? It is. Okay. I just wonder how they, if that had anything to do with the increase in money or anything this year with <coughs> all the with, meals. Everything. And it could have. And, you know, even talking with Matt about that uh, last night, Matt said that, uh, you know, has the government attached any extra dollars? So we did a little scenario today, didn't we, Tiffany? We went through and looked at some other districts that are about our size. Uh, and they, well, they weren't hardly our size and they had considerable increase, but nothing like we had. They had increases of five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars, but they were only supposed to get a million or a million and a half dollars. And we were supposed to get three. So you do the math. I mean, it could, it, ratioly, I guess it works. <laughs> yeah. I just wondering how that was determined this time, you know? Yeah, I know that that's some of the questions we've been asking as well. And, uh, yeah. They're just keep assuring us that that's our allocation. Right. Okay. Well, we'll take it. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I said. <laughs> okay. So I need a motion to approve the fiscal year 2021 tentative working budget. I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Junior second. Any opposed? Motion passed. Well, that's it, guys. I need a motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Dr. Sanders, I need a second. <laughs> I'll second. Linda, second. Any opposed? Motion passed. Meetings adjourned.